Oh, hey there, YouTube. I'm back again today for another game review. And today, I'm very excited to check it out. Bemuse from Devious Weasel Games. This is for four to six players. Age is 14 plus. It'll take about 15 to 30 minutes to play. And Bemuse is a game of doubt and dread. And I'm actually just going to read the game overview because I am such a plebeian. I don't actually know what the game is about. Each player is a muse, a timeless being that has inspired artists since the dawn of human creativity. Each muse has chosen one human virtuoso as their protege and seeks to elevate that virtue of the it's a game where you have one person who is your target and you are trying to do something to that target either keeping them insane or making them insane keeping them sane killing them keeping them alive a variety of different things you're going to do that by planting dread and doubt into them because i guess they're highly depressive and if they get too much dread they just kill themselves or something not quite sure what the theme's all about fancy artwork though but is the game good let's open it up and i'll tell you what i think Alrighty then, we're going to take a look at what you're inside of Bemuse. So first of all, we're in a handy dandy rule booklet. It is nine pages, double-sided, full color, full of pictures, illustrations, examples, and it's pretty well done. It will teach you how to play the game, which is obviously the intent of the rule booklet. It does two things that super annoy me, like this. Like, I understand you have pretty pictures. You paid somebody a lot of money to draw these cool looking pictures. Can we please not have them in the rule booklet all over the place? How about we have, you know, useful examples like this one and like that one that may not look as pretty, but it's very useful when I'm trying to learn the rules. So yeah, the other thing is they just, they just shove the theme right down your throat right from the get-go, which I don't mind thematic games, even if I don't like the theme that much, but come on, let me learn the rules before you start shoving all these terms like Geminas and Phantasmas and Muses and blah, 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 blah. Show me the rules and then shove the theme down my throat with the gameplay. I don't need it in the rule booklet. I want it in the game. Um, so... Continuing onward, what are you going to be doing in Bemused? You are going to be a character. You'll be the singer, or the thespian, or the poet, or the, the painter, or I don't know, something something artsy. I don't even think thespian, I don't know what a thespian is. Isn't that just somebody who's nice? I don't know. You're going to be one of these characters, and you are going to have an ex-boyfriend or an ex-girlfriend, which will be your Gemini. And I am dumbing down the theme, because I don't actually understand the theme that well. Uh, so my ex-boyfriend uh, is the poet. So I'm the singer, my ex-boyfriend is the poet, and then I'm going to have a secret objective that I want to carry out on my ex-boyfriend slash ex-girlfriend. So in this particular example, love. You cherish and adore your Gemina, obviously, ex-boyfriend, ex-girlfriend. You get one point if your Gemina is not dead at the end of the game. So thematically, the way I see it is, all right, I'm the singer and the poet broke up with me because uh, he didn't understand how deep and true my love is for him. So one day he's going to realize that, so I need to keep him alive so him and I can be happy together and get one point in the, the you know, when they can get the done. I don't know. So, everyone is going to start off the game. They're going to get a character card, which is double-sided. If it goes like this, you're dead and you become a phantasma. What's a phantasma? I don't know. I don't know what the hell a phantasma is. It's just another, it's a third-party team at the end of the game. And if you become a phantasma, then you try to kill other people so they become phantasmas. Because the way the scoring works is the more phantasmas you have at the end of the game, the more points you are going to score. And there's a little bit uh, how the scoring works. So... Essentially, there's going to be three states you can be in. You can be Phantasma, which means you're dead. You can be Insane, which means your card is tipped and you're going to have special rules on how you can play your turn. You're going to have a lot more restrictions. Or you can be Sane, which is good, and it means you're going to get an extra point at the end of the game. Let's go over the rest of the components, though. So, first, uh, we have Dread cards, which are Skulls. And as you can guess, in most games, Skulls equal Bad. If you ever have five cards in front of you and three of them are skulls, then you are dead. A phantasma. Let's just call it dead. I feel like dead's way easier. You're dead. Next, you have these cards. This is the Well of Doubt. It, it's the doubt draw pile. And there's going to be different kinds of doubt in here. The painter, the musician, the thespian, the dancer. And everyone's going to have their own unique kind of doubt, which will be color coordinated. So the singer's doubt is going to be purple. And this guy's doubt, the poet, is going to be yellow. It's all really clean. The graphic design in this game is, is pretty well done. So when you first start the game, you are going to get one dread card. And I believe it is you get uh, four of the doubt cards. Either four or five. I'm not going to look right now, but it's one of those. And then on your turn, you're going to have a couple choices that you can make. It's also on this handy dandy little player aid card, which doesn't actually come in the game. So I'm going to use it to show it to you, but mind boggling, it does not come in the game. Luckily though, they do have a taking a turn on the back of this, which I always love when game companies do this. So you draw two cards from the Well of Doubt, which is this one right here. So you're going to build up your hand size. Then what you're going to do is you have four choices. The first one is that you can plant doubt. How do you plant doubt? Well, it's kind of simple. You'd say, oh, the painter, I'm going to plant 
doubt on the painter. So you'd put this in front of the painter, like so. There you go. Simple as that. The next thing you can do is you can plant Dread. So everyone's going to start the game with one Dread card. And as we mentioned, Dread cards are really stinking bad because if you have three of them and you have five cards, you are dead. <laughs> dead. Uh, so you plant Dread. Hey, you go, hey, I'm planting this Dread right here. You only have one like that, though. Next thing you can do is you can use your special ability. So this is an asymmetrical game. Everyone will have their own different special ability, which will be on the bottom right-hand corner of the card. So for instance, for me, I'm the singer. I will be able to remove Dread card from any living Versiosha and return it to the Well of Dread. So essentially, I can get rid of Dread. So if my goal was to keep the painter alive, this is a great card to have because I'm going to be able to take away Dread from them. So that is fantastic. The only catch on this particular action is that you have to discard one of your own cards in order to do it. So I'd say, all right, I'm just discarding this, and now I'm using my special ability. The last action you can do is you can instill dread. This is when you're going to give up two of a kind of cards, and then you can give a dread to anyone in the game. Now, this sounds like a really good thing, but here's the interesting aspect of the game, and it's one of the main aspects of the game, is that by doing this, you are giving up two cards on your turn. And you are only going to draw two cards every single turn. Uh, and you do have to discard at the end of your turn. So by doing this, you are limiting, you are uh, lowering your hand size for the rest of the game. So if you did this on your first move, then that means you are going to have minus one to your hand size for the entire game. So it is a big decision in order to do that. So those are the four things you can do. Now you also can play a second action if you would like, but once again, if you take a second action, that means your hand size is going to be smaller. Because even if it's just planting another doubt on the poet or the painter or the somebody like that, that is another card that you are not going to have. Last but not least, you're going to discard a card of your choice to the discard pile, and then your turn will be over. Now, what can happen in the game sometime, and I'm just going to use a very fast and loose example, is that you might have five dread in front of you. Like so. Obviously, you probably wouldn't have these five dread in front of you, but five dread in front of you. What that means is you now tip your tile immediately and you become insane. So once again, we can flip over this handy dandy player aid card, which is not included in the game for some reason. And um, <laughs> it's going to show you what you do on your turn instead. And essentially how this works is you're insane, so you have limited choices. You're only going to draw two of your cards randomly, and then you're going to pick one of those cards to play and then pick one to discard. So essentially you're only going to have uh, one of two choices each and every turn. Now luckily though, you can become uninsane in a variety of different ways. The other thing about coming insane is that you now flip over your Gemina card. So now everyone knows that you are attached with the poet. They don't know though if you're trying to kill him, if you're trying to drive him insane, what you're trying to do with him. But the other thing is with your Gemina, or not your Gemina, your, is it? Yeah, Gemina, stupid names. With your Gemina card flipped up, you also can use their special ability as well, which means I could turn a dread into a doubt if I were the poet, or I could turn, uh, you know, a doubt into a dread, any variety of different things. But anywho, you're going to continue to do this until, and I, and I want to make sure I specify how they used it in the rule booklets, because it just cracks me up. The game immediately ends when fewer than two insane virtuosos remain in play. Fewer than two. Wouldn't that be one or zero? I, I, don't, I just don't understand how they chose that wording. Essentially, once there's only one person that's sane in the game, the game will end, and you're going to calculate up your score. If you're sane, you are going to get ten points. Insane gets nine. Phantasmas will get two, one, or zero, depending on the play count and then you're also going to lose points for how many dread and doubt you have in front of you whoever has the most points at the end of the game will be the winner of bemused and that in a nutshell is how the game is played all right then bemused from devious weasel games what are my final thoughts let's go for the pros let's go for the cons first on the con side game's not going to be for everybody for a variety of different reasons four to six players aren't uh, restricted player count another con that i have this game is that i get it i get it there's theme in the game i get the theme i get the theme stop it stop it with the theme um I don't like rule booklets that shove the theme so heavily into your face when you're trying to learn the game. I'm trying to learn the game here. Keep the theme until later. I can enjoy the theme after I've learned the game, but stop using all these buzzwords and keywords and all these fancy, clever terminologies in the rule booklet while I'm trying to learn the rules. Keep it simple, then slap me across the face with the theme. That being said, I didn't like the theme. I, I thought it was dumb. It's like there's poets and there's just painters and there's artists and they all get dread and doubt and they're depressed. I guess this is just like you saying mean things to people until they go insane or kill themselves. It's kind of like 
bullying the game. It really is, now that I think about it. So it's, this is bullying the game where you have, and you might even have like a secret person that you're obsessed with and you want to say so many mean things about them that it drives them insane or tries them to suicide. Oh my God, that's what this game is about. I kind of like the theme now, that's terrible. Uh, I've never thought about it like that. Uh, continuing onward. So yeah, the theme did not do it for me, but now that I think about it, I actually kind of like the theme a little bit better next time I explain the rules. Uh, the player aid card. There's a really useful player aid card. It didn't actually come with the game. Seems like a really odd choice. Uh, it's very useful, but it's not in the game. Luckily, the back of the rule booklet is nice. Uh, the 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 things that you can do on your turns are somewhat limited. I mean, you really only have four choices, and you really need to specify this when you're teaching the rules, that you don't want to use too many cards on your turn because there are long-term ramifications for that. That being said, it's a very short game. I mean, it is. Uh, I think it's like... 15 to 30 minutes i'd say yeah once you start knowing what you're doing you're going to knock this out in about 15 20 minutes so that is a good thing but also some people are going to want more some people are going to want a little bit more meat on the bones because it is a pretty straightforward game any other cons that i personally have with this game i would have liked a, a little bit more variety in the actions I, I think i am in that boat that i wish there was just a little bit more meat in this game because i do enjoy the game i'm going to tell you i like it but I wanted a little bit more meat on the bones. But moving on to the pros, I enjoyed Bemused. I thought it was a very solid game, and I did not think I was going to enjoy it as much as I did. When I first started reading the rule booklets, I immediately shut down. I'll be brutally honest with you. I started, I started reading the rule booklets, and I was just like, nope, I'll get to this game later. This is just nope, just, just big pile of nope. And then I sat down, and I read it, and I was like, okay, this is actually a pretty straightforward game. You're trying to plant bad stuff on certain other people you're trying to protect this person or plant bad stuff on this person if you become a phantasma then you're trying to kill other people and it seemed like a relatively straightforward game and it does and that's another con i have this game you need to specify kind of what this game is to when you're going into it it feels like a hidden deduction or a social deduction kind of game and it's not it's not at all it's it's you know Yes, you have this person and you have a secret objective you're trying to do on them, but it becomes very obvious what you're trying to do because you want it to be very obvious. You want to get this goal accomplished. And, I don't know, it's just a weird, it's a different game. And that's, uh, all three of the games that I've played from Devious Weasel Games, oh, they're, they're different games. I will say this is my favorite one of the three that I have played. And I enjoy this game, and I'm going to tell you, I think it's a good to great game. And I think if you routinely hit five or six players, this is a nice filler game to add to your collection, because it is really a filler game. Also, the gameplay is simple enough that this is one of those games that you can learn it, play it, put it on your shelf, get it out a couple months later, and get back into the game relatively quickly. Because that's something I always hate when I put a game on my shelf, because I'm like, this is a good to great game. I like this game, but then I get it back out, and it takes like 20, 30, 40 minutes to get the game up and running because I don't remember how to play the game. This one is straightforward and simple enough that that is not the case. Also, while I do dog on the theme, it's fun to get in the theme because it's fun to kill people. And what we started doing is we started saying mean things about other people as we, we played the doubt cards. It's like, your painting sucks dude this looks like my six-year-old did it this looks like poop smears for my three-month-old you know we started to be mean to each other and we kind of got into that so if your group is the kind that can get into that and kind of role play it up a little bit i think you will have some fun with this game because i think it's a good to great game so in the end be mused it's simple for me personally do you routinely hit five to six players do you like lighter filler weight games? Then yes, check this one out. I can recommend it. I think I am going to be keeping it. Oh, that's the best thing. I said I played this six times. And that happened because I played it with three different groups. And each time when we got finished the first time, all the different groups were like, yeah, let's play that again. Let's, let's play that again. I want to I get a better feel of this game. And uh, that's always a good thing in my book when the groups, all three different groups, want to play the game again. So in the end, that has been used, a game that I can recommend if you are in the market for a five or six player lighter weight filler game. If you enjoyed this review, please be sure to click on that subscribe button down below or in the comments below. Let me know. Why are Mexican buffets not nearly as popular as Chinese buffets? What is the deal with that? I want more Mexican buffets. When I was a kid, there was two Mexican buffets in my town. Now there is zero. I mean, there's one that runs like a Mexican brunch style buffet on Sunday afternoon. Actually, two that do that. It's like, uh, you know... Hey, maybe I'm hungover. Maybe I'm busy Sunday afternoon. Why can't I have this delicious Mexican buffet throughout the entire week? What's the deal with that? Please explain it to me. Let me know in the comments below. Do you have a Mexican buffet around at your location? And as always, thanks for your time, YouTube. In the face with the theme. We get it. There's theme. There's theme. There's theme. Take my theme. Take my theme. And it's like, okay, I get it. You got a theme.